Hello everyone and thank you for tuning into the IT Knowledge Base YouTube channel. I am thrilled to have you here. Whether you are a seasoned IT pro or just starting your tech journey, this channel is your go-to source for all things IT related. From troubleshooting tips to deep dive into the latest technologies, we've got you covered here. Today I am going to explain our protocol and our poisoning, a practical lab guide to understand and implementing spoofing attacks how they work and why we even need them. Also, I'm going to explain how things are working behind the scenes and why it happened. Understanding our protocol, ARP Address Resolution Protocol. This is a protocol that is used in LAN to match IP with their MAC address. How ARP works? Imagine a big single network where all the nodes have an IP and their MAC addresses. You can call this a name tag and device A is trying to find someone with the name device B to talk to them. R poisoning. R poisoning is a type of attack where device A is looking for device B's MAC address. Instead of device B responding, device C, the attacker, pretend to be device B and says, I am device B and here's my MAC address. As a result, Device A mistakenly believes that device C is device B and sends its data to device C instead. Now you will have a question, what happened to device B's real response? Let me explain what happened when both device B, the real one, and device C, the attacker, responds to device A's ARP request. Suppose the scenario, device A sends a request. Device A says, who has this IP address, meaning it's looking for device B's MAC address. Here is the two responses. Device B, the real one, responds with its correct MAC address. And device C, the attacker, also responds pretending to be device B and gives its own MAC address. Then what happened next? Device A receives two responses. Device A updates its R cache with the most recent response it received. This means the attacker's response might override the real one if it arrives later. When device A receives device B's response, it will save it in its ARP cache and later device A automatically updates its ARP cache with the new MAC address, replacing with the old one. This happens whenever a new ARP reply is received. And the result will be, device A now thinks device C is device B. So when device A wants to send data to device B, it sends it to device C to the attacker. Device B's response, it might still receive some data from device A, especially if device A's ARP cache has not been updated yet. However, once device A cache is updated with the device C's MAC address, all further communications mean for device B will be sent to device C instead. That's why attackers continuously send fake ARP replies to ensure their MAC addresses stays in device A's ARP cache for keeping attack active. So how ARP protocol works? Looking for device A's or target, what you or attacker have, you know the IP address of device A, but you do not know its MAC address. What you or attacker do, you could perform an ARP scan or broadcast to know its MAC address. And then device A response will be yes, I am device A and this is my MAC address. So now making it easy for you, storing information, it is very easy to forget MAC addresses. So you save device A's MAC address in an ARP cache. So next time you want to contact device A, you do not need to get MAC address again. Now you know what ARP protocol is and how it works. You can easily learn how ARP poisoning, also known as ARP spoofing works. Building a virtual lab. Download and install VirtualBox. Visit the VirtualBox website and download the latest version for your operating system and follow the installation instructions to install VirtualBox on your system. Then you have to create two virtual machines, one for Windows 10 Pro and this will become a victim and second will be your Kali Linux for attacking. Allocate at least 2 GB of RAM and create a virtual hard disk. Now let's see in action how to perform our poisoning attack in our lab environment. Step number one, identify the IP addresses and MAC address in Windows. Open the command prompt and type ipconfig slash all. Note the IP address and MAC address of this Windows virtual machine. Turn off the firewall on Windows. If not, Kali Linux will not be able to ping either. It's already turned off. Now back to your Kali Linux. Open the terminal. 
and type if config or IPA in the terminal. Note the IP address and MAC address of this Kali Linux virtual machine and the interface name. We need all these in a moment. Now you will need tools like ARP spoof which is a part of DSNF and Wireshark or TCP dump to monitor the traffic. Now install the DSNF tool which already includes ARP spoof. First update the repository. Type apt get update. Now install the DSNF, Wireshark and TCP dump. These are already installed. Step number 3, enable IP forwarding. You need to enable IP forwarding so that Kali Linux can route traffic between device A and device B. You only need to run the IP forwarding command to this attacking machine or device C. Step number 4, perform our poisoning. Now you already know the victim's IP address and the default gateway. Now poison the windows VM's ARP cache, type ARP spoof, hyphen I for interface and my interface name is eth0, hyphen T for target, my target is windows machine with the IP address of 192.168.11.10 and my gateway 192.168.11.1 and hit enter. This command makes the windows VM think that your Kali Linux is the gateway or router. When the windows VM tries to send packets to the gateway, it will send them to the attacker or Kali Linux VM instead. Now poison the gateway's ARP cache. Open another terminal. And type this command. ARP spoof space hyphen I for interface and my interface name is eth0 space hyphen T. This time my target is my gateway and space my victim IP address. Hit enter. Why both commands are needed? The answer is to complete the interception. Running both commands ensures that traffic between the Windows VM and the gateway is intercepted. If you only run one of the commands, you might miss traffic because the other end is still using the actual IP addresses for communication. And the second purpose is for bidirectional traffic. Our poisoning is most effective when both ends of communication, the client and the server or the client and the gateway are deceived into thinking that the attacker is the intended recipient. This way you can capture or manipulate traffic in both directions. Now capture and analyze the traffic. Now everything is set. If you do anything, any online activity, it will be captured by the attacker or Kali Linux, which I can be view using Wireshark or TCP dump. Open another terminal. Type tcp dump space hyphen i for interface and my interface name is eth0 space hyphen w and the file name. Hit enter. This command will save all traffic that is going from eth0 in capture.pcap file which you can analyze after a lot of is passed on. Switch back to your windows machine and generate some traffic. Ping to DNS IP. Open browser. Open google.com and browse some other web traffic. Microsoft.com and Cisco.com. Now go back to our Kali Linux machine. Here you can see it generates some bytes. Control C for stop. You can also using the Wireshark. Type Wireshark. M percent click on your specified interface and now it's generating some traffic go back to our windows machine to generate some traffic cisco.com microsoft.com types ping now go back to our attacking machine Press stop. Now apply the filter to the specified IP address. This is our victim IP accessing some websites.
you will be able to see the traffic including requests and responses from the windows vm all right that is all for the now thank you for watching and i look forward to sharing more of my journey with you all if you want to see more awesome training content make sure you click that subscribe button click it so you don't miss it or if you have any issues or questions you can reach out to me and i'd be happy to help you out thank you